With the John Maddox Prize, we're looking for something a bit more than what people are expected to do as part of their role, part of their job. We're looking for people who have made an area of discussion, of public discussion, their responsibility. We want to reward someone who we feel has uh, devoted a large chunk of their time to defending their science and campaigning for their science. What actually really made the decision for us was the extent to which this person had not just stood up for science but had spoken truth to power, had taken those arguments, often unpopular arguments, uh, into places where they really needed to be heard. It's never an easy decision when there are several strong candidates, but uh, we certainly had a clear consensus that we had an outstanding winner this time round, uh, someone who had a uh, sustained record of engagement with one of the most important areas of uh, current controversy. I'm really delighted that the 2013 John Maddox Prize winner is David Knott. David Nutt is Professor of Neuropsychopharmacology. To many of us, what that means is the study of the effect of drugs on the brain uh, and on other aspects of our lives. And what David has done is brought a discussion about evidence right to the heart of many of those very tricky political and social debates about drugs. There's a lot of uh, uh, misapprehension about the relative risks of different kinds of drugs and he has always insisted that evidence is needed in order that politicians should be able to decide on the basis of overall criteria what the classification should be of those drugs. I nominated David because I think he's a, a man with scientific integrity and personal integrity and somebody who cares passionately about injustices in the world. I think what we admired most about the prize winner was his ability to pick himself up after a, a really a, a severe attack. David um, had, the, had the difficulty of pursuing his own academic, scientific and clinical interest in drugs in parallel with being uh, the chair of a government committee. Um, but some of his communications were taken by, by the governor, by government ministers, as being too much of a direct intervention in the process of developing policy, um, too, too um, much of a criticism of, of individual politicians, including ministers. Uh, I think he was an, you know, he was an irritant um, within, within government um, and, and in the end was summarily dismissed. People often say to me, well, you know, why did you take the job if you knew that people weren't going to be uh, accepting your opinions, you know, and I said, well, I, actually, that's not true, you know, I thought, maybe naively, that, you know, government scientific advisers actually were there to advise the government on science, and, uh, and one thing's for sure, I am, I will never, I will never subjugate knowledge of the truth simply to appease a politician. Politicians come and go, they could disappear overnight, any, any minister you talk to could be there one day, gone the next, but the science is there, it's forever, and scientists have really got to stand up for that. To be dismissed by a Home Secretary, by a senior government minister, by a member of the Cabinet, um, would have destroyed lesser people. Um, he didn't. He rose to the, 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 the challenge. He defended himself and his, his um, actions. Um, and he moved on into new areas, exploring the scientific evidence for our attitudes to, to drugs. Well, I'm going to tell you about this. I'm going to tell you about what well, you've got to come and see this image, all right? Because, all right. no, it's really good. You'll think you'll be fascinated what's, uh, by it. What's, uh, Something we've dug out of the end. David's schedule is quite remarkable. He's not only um, actively involved with his um, research group, he's also um, a clinician, he's a, a practicing psychiatrist, so he has clinics, he sees patients, and he gives a lot of his time to talk to the public. The essence of why I nominated David is that he just is so tireless in his defence of the evidence. I mean, where most people might, after flying back from some country or other, want to rest, he'll go straight out to talk to a public meeting. In terms of standing up for science, that's what he does every day. 
and I can't think of anyone better to receive the award, really. But I told you about this stuff of Matt Field tonight. He's ultra high frequency. I'm often asked the question, you know, would, I, would you do it again? Do you have regrets? You know, what, did, did, you know, in hindsight, was it the right thing to do? And the answer is that um, I certainly didn't enjoy it. It was a very stressful period. Although, you know, I, I, thanks to the media, I managed to really get my argument across. So I think in the end, the debate was better served by me being sacked. I think the oxygen of publicity actually got the argument into the public domain very well. Uh, I, I don't think I could have done anything differently. I just, it's not in my nature. I, I, I cannot sit in front of a camera and tell a half truth. I'm, you know, I've always been a bit like that. I've always, I'm not a politician, I'm a scientist. Oh, hi, is Amanda there, please? David Nutt.